Hello! The plan for this week, we're going to read two novels and seven volumes of manga. We're going to finish up three series. I'm very excited. Welcome to the reading vlog. Monday morning. The first series I plan on focusing on for this week is Peter McLean's War for the Rose Crown Quartet. I'm reading Priest of Crowns. I've loved the first three installments of this series, particularly the first installment, Priest of Bones, which had me just bawling at several points. I've cried three times during this series so far. I imagine I might cry one more time before I finish Priest of Crowns. I'm about halfway done. This book takes place in the aftermath of a great war. All of our protagonists are returning home, and they come back to their hometown, and it's taken over by a new gang, because our protagonists are gangsters. They are businessmen. They are criminals. And it's a, it's a gangster story in a fantasy setting. So there's magic, gangsters, political intrigue, spies, government officials, all in conflict with one another in this puzzle, this enigma that the reader doesn't quite understand. And everything's finally coming together. I can't, I'm finally understanding the landscape of this world, and it's quite intriguing. It's going to be a little difficult to talk about this book without giving some spoilers for the series. But there's plenty of themes to talk about, and I'm excited to finish it. Tactics win skirmishes. Strategies win battles. And logistics win wars. Wednesday night. Just under 100 pages left of Priest of Crowns, and I'm already sad. One of the worst things about finishing a great series is that you can never reread a series again for the first time. And I'm enjoying the journey. I've grown to love the characters. And I just, I don't want to see the journey end. And I'm finishing three series this week. The other two series I'm going to be finishing is, well, one of them I'm not technically finishing because System Collapse is the latest installment of the Murderbot Diaries. And it's just, I'm not sure how many more books will be left in this series, but I'll have to wait another year for another Murderbot book. That also makes me sad. And I'm starting and finishing a manga series, Orange. And I don't even know how I feel about that, because I'm only like 20 pages in. So I'm going to be finishing three series this week. And that's a lot of catharsis. That's a lot of sad. Hopefully there's a lot of happiness mixed in with that. But I'm feeling a little bummed already, and I'm not even halfway through the week. If you're going through hell, walk like you own the place. Walk like the devil. Thursday. I finished Priest of Crowns. The ending was not cathartic whatsoever for me. I don't think the ending was pulled off well. The first half of Priests of Crowns was really dang good. Like, it was a return to form to the first book because the first book is the strongest book in the quartet. The second two installments are good, but they're not great. And I was like, maybe the second two books had like a middle book type syndrome. The fourth book's gonna bring it all back. And it didn't. I remember being in the last 30 pages and being like, how is the author going to tie all these things off in a satisfying way? There's so much more that needs to be done. And he doesn't tie it off in a satisfying way. I will say this, the ending passage, the last paragraph, will tug on your heartstrings. It hit me in the feels, literal chills. So obviously, that passage was brilliant. The author had some great things he was going for for the ending part of this quartet. And he just pulled it off in a haphazard, rushed way. So thematically, in terms of how it relates to the themes of the quartet, the ending was really good. But execution, I wasn't a big fan of it. There were some points where the author's obviously trying to give you a really sad scene, a scene that's supposed to bring tears to your eyes. But since it was pulled off in a not good way, it was emotionally a miss for me. And that's depressing. One thing about the, Red, um, the War for the Rose Crown Quartet is originally it was going to be a trilogy, but the author decided that he needed an extra book to tell the story in a way that was satisfying. So I was convinced that Priest of Crowns was going to be a satisfying, cathartic ending to this series. I was prepared for post-series depression, at the end of this book. Instead, the third book was not that good compared to the other two, still above average. And I was like, okay, that means the fourth book's gonna be amazing, and it wasn't. I think, arguably, the fourth book might be the worst in the quartet. So that's lame. That's not how you wanna feel at the end of a journey. 
But I'll be doing a series review about this series probably next week. So maybe I'll feel more positively about it when the ending is not so fresh in my mind. But yeah, not the type of ending I wanted for this week's reading vlog. But I got two more endings to go. Friday. So today I'm in a very somber mood. I started Orange and this manga I finished volume one. And it's incredibly intriguing to me. I heard about it from a YouTube video recommending it and saying that it was a masterpiece. I saw that it was only seven volumes and I was like, okay, I'll give it a try. The premise of it is this, essentially. A teenage girl receives a letter from herself 10 years in the future. She says, I have all these regrets. I wish I would have done things differently. And by the way, this friend that you have, they're not here 10 years in the future. They died. And it is strongly insinuated that this character takes their own life. So this manga talks a lot about how, like, the whole, the whole sentiment, like, I wish I would have done things differently. I could have saved this individual. If only I could have been there for this person. And it's hitting me in the feels, already bringing tears to my eyes on just volume one. I have six volumes to go. And I, I think why I'm in such a somber mood today is because I went out to dinner with some of my friends today. And it was the first time the three of us had been in, a, in the same room in like three years. And we were talking about that. We mentioned it. Like, it's been three years since we've all been together. And the fourth person that was in that friend group who was there, he passed away. And like two years ago, he took, almost two years ago, he took his own life. So I'm reading this book about, some, about this person who's one of their best friends took their lives. And then I'm like kind of having this somber realization of my other friends. So I'm strongly connecting with this story. And I'm hoping that it's going to be a therapeutic and not a traumatizing experience. But as Jung, the psychologist Jung would say, sometimes the way out of pain is through. Sometimes there's times in your life where you're supposed to avoid feeling certain things. And sometimes there's, there's a time in your life where you're, tr you're supposed to confront those things. And that helps you. So we'll have to see. Saturday. I read three more volumes of Orange today. I have cried four times so far across four and a half volumes. One, two and a half volumes left. I've been reading them on the Kindle. I only have volume seven from the library because that was the only one that was available. So I'll be finishing this probably around one o'clock tomorrow. It has been therapeutic, but I have, I'm still in a very somber mood. Because it's just a story about friendship and wanting to do more for your friends and wanting to make sure they have reasons to stick around and dealing with, like, the regrets of feeling like you could have done more for people that you loved. And that's something I feel like a lot of people could relate to. I know I can relate strongly to that message. But yeah, hitting me very much in the feels. The other book I was reading today was System Collapse, which is the latest installment in Martha Wells' Murderbot Diaries. It is an entirely different tone to orange. As opposed to being somber, this is like a different type of thought provoking. It's like funny, thought provoking, intense, suspenseful. It follows our murder bot. He is a construct, part human, part machine. He has his agency, he hacked his governor module, and he's able to do, or it's able to do what it likes. And I haven't been enjoying the second story arc in Murderbot Diaries. The first story arc, was awesome. It had a clear, like, clear, like, plot line, storyline that it was trying to follow for the first five installments of the series. And then the author started making this series of novellas into novels. And the novels are exhausting to read because there's technical computer language. It's very repetitive because Murderbot is a narrator and he's a machine. So he tells things over and over again. And it's just... I enjoy it, but it's exhausting to read. Like, this novel is only like 230-something pages, and it is, it is a chore. So if I don't reach my finished three series this week, it'll be because Murderbot is exhausting to read. So I hope this series ends very soon, because I enjoy it, but I'm afraid it might stick around a little too long. 
This installment of the Murderbot Diaries talks a lot about like dealing with trauma and PTSD and, you know, kind of losing your edge in your career, in your path. And so, in the terms of trauma, it relates very strongly to Orange. So tomorrow, I'm hoping I'll have a very thought-provoking, somber last day of the vlog. And this, all the three reads I've read this week, will just make a nice cocktail of a week. 1,574 pages. That's a new record for the vlog. That's a personal best for the channel. I'm very excited about that. Most of those pages were manga pages, but when you're reading seven volumes of manga in one week, that's going to add to your page count. I just finished volume seven of Orange, and what a masterfully done series. That's only the second manga series I finished, but I feel like Pluto and Orange were both damn near perfect stories. Orange was just an incredibly emotional and therapeutic read for me. The first five, five volumes in particular were masterfully done. I honestly believe that the author could have ended the series after volume five. Volume six was published, to my understanding, some time later. It wasn't needed, but it did add some context and information to the narrative about certain supporting characters that maybe I didn't need because you, you can kind of deduce why they acted in a certain way, but it was quite nice. Volume seven was just un not needed fan service. I did enjoy it, but it was not needed. And it just sometimes it's very frustrating when an author creates something that is almost perfect and they feel the need to return to it. Because I imagine if you are an artist or you're an author and you write an amazing story, you want to re revisit those characters. You want to get back into that narrative. But I feel like more often than not, you kind of make your masterpiece a little bit worse the more you add to it. That being said, Orange is still an amazing series. I recommend you tr I recommend you give it a try. I have trouble reading about stories that are centered around suicide because it's something that's very personal to me. I've had several very important people in my life take their own lives. And at first, this series was incredibly trig triggering to read. But one thing I really appreciate about Orange is that there are many arguments against suicide. But when you're watching a movie or reading a book series, they generally only lean into one argument. Orange tells the story of, of a friend group of six individuals, and they all have different arguments about why you shouldn't end your life, why you should stick around. And it was nice to see reasons from several different angles about why you shouldn't choose suicide tackled in a very well thought out, thought provoking way that wasn't too heavy handed. I very much appreciated the thoughtful way the author depicted the dark thoughts that leads to one considering suicide. Because no one in their right mind, no one that is not hurting in an incredibly deep, deep, visceral way, considers suicide. Because it's not a rational thing. We did not evolve to want to end our lives. And the author did a very good job at portraying this suicidal character in a way that was just so real and raw and relatable. And I appreciate her for doing that in just a masterful way. It's an amazing series. I can't wait to upload a series review for Orange in the next two to three weeks. After I get a series review of Pluto done, because I've been meaning to get to that for almost two months now. So yeah, two series reviews are coming out in the month of May. 1,574 pages, one novel, seven volumes of manga. I didn't quite get around to finishing System Collapse because... Murderbot is very hard for me to read, but I'll be finishing it before April is over, going into March, going into May rather, with a clean slate. I'm very happy to finally be feeling like myself again. The after effects of pneumonia were really kicking my butt. I was fatigued, I was breathless, I was having trouble talking loudly enough to film, so I look forward to getting back to my regular scheduled programming of four videos a week. April was pretty rough, I'm not gonna lie. But I'm looking forward to May. I'm looking forward to getting 200 videos uploaded for the year 2024 and continuing on with my reading journey. Thank you guys for watching this week's reading vlog, and I'll see you guys next time.